Today is day one, and we're going to be focusing on and inequalities, and then the next day we'll be focusing on or inequalities, and that will make sense in just a moment. So first, let's begin by defining what a compound inequality is. It is two distinct inequalities joined by the word and or the word or. So now let's look at those two different inequalities and learn the differences, how we can distinguish the difference between them. Okay, and versus or. So this is the chart. On the left, we're going to focus on the and inequalities first. An and graph contains the overlap of the graphs of the two inequalities that form the compound inequality. So as you can see, right here. We have one inequality going this way and we have another inequality going to the left. And the overlap is the and inequality. So as you can see, that green graph right there is the overlap of the red and the blue. So it's another word for overlap would be the intersection or where they cross paths. And now let's look at or. Or is quite different. Or graph contains each graph of the two inequalities. So as you can see in the graph above, we have one going to the left, we have one going to the right. They do not overlap, so the or graph is just the combination of both. So you see that right there, they, they don't overlap, so the overlap is not possible at all. And the last part down here, x is between 3 and 7 inclusive. We need to figure out what the word inclusive means. Inclusive means that the solutions of the inequality include the endpoints. That's the major word right there, is the word include. And you can see include is actually in the word inclusive. The prefix is in the beginning of both words. So the solutions include the endpoints wherever the inequality starts and ends. Okay? So now let's do example one. What compound inequality represents the phrase, graph the solutions? Okay, so what we need to do is first of all identify it's an and inequality, and then underline the pieces next to it. All real numbers that are greater than negative 2 and less than 6. So, how do we write that? Well, let's use x. x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 6. So that's the beginning, and now what we want to do for and inequalities, we can combine them even further. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to reverse the first inequality, negative 2, is less than x, keep the other one the same, and think about it for a second. The and inequality is the combination of both of these, the overlap. So maybe we should graph this first. Let's do that, and maybe this will make more sense. Open circle on the negative 2, and we're using the first inequality, so it's shading to the right, the number's bigger than negative 2. And now let's go to the 6. Okay, so I drew a 6, and your graph actually already includes the 6, so that's great. So put an open circle, and then we're shading to the left. So as you can see, there is an overlap going on. So the graph of the two is just where they cross paths. So this is the graph right here. Now, as I was talking about before, you can merge the inequality. So if x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 6, you can write it like this. Negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. So what we just did there was we merged the x values right here. This is an x, this is an x. We just combined them and brought them together with one x value. So that's the answer right there. Okay, moving on to part b. All real numbers that are less than 0 or greater than or equal to 5. So we're using the or word this time. Um, less than 0, let's use y. y is less than 0 or y is greater than or equal to 5. And with an or inequality, they don't overlap. So we really don't have anything else to do besides graphing. So there's the y is less than 0, and then the y is greater than or equal to 5. Close circle, shaded to the right, and that completes this example. 
Okay, here's some blanks for you to fill in at the top of the next page. Uh, a solution of a compound inequality involving and is any number that makes both inequalities true. So it has to satisfy both inequalities. And in order to do this, well, there's two different approaches. We're going to focus first on separating the two inequalities. You may prefer this, you may not, so we'll see. What are the solutions of this inequality? The first thing that we're going to do is separate them. See how the m minus 4 is in the middle of both? We're going to separate it. So negative 3 is less than or equal to m minus 4, and m minus 4 is less than negative 1. Now, we want to use our operations like we've done before. We want to get the m by itself. So plus 4 on both sides, and that is positive 1 over there. And then the other one, add 4 again, m is less than 3. Now, remember, when we have an and inequality, we can merge them together. So we're going to have 1m in the middle and 1 and 3 on the outside. Now we just need to graph. This is going to be a closed circle on the 1 and an open circle on the 3. So always remember, when you're working with an and inequality, it's between the two endpoints. When you're working with an or, they're going in opposite directions. Okay, example three. To earn a B in your algebra course, you must achieve an unrounded test average between 84 and 86 inclusive. You scored 86, 85, and 80 on the first three tests. What possible scores can you earn on the last test to earn a B in the course? So you must get between an 84 and 86 inclusive. Remember, inclusive means including those values. So we're going to have a line underneath the symbol. So let's write our inequality. 84 is the lowest and then 86 is the highest, and then the middle, how do you find the average of a certain number of numbers? What you do is you add up all of them, and you divide by the number of numbers, or amount of numbers. Lots of numbers. Okay, plus x. x is going to be the score of the last test. Let's write on the side. Score of last test and then divide by 4 because there's 4 tests total. I'm going to show you how to do this without separating this time because you might prefer that. So let's combine like terms. 86 plus 85 plus 80 is 251. Everything else comes down. And now in order to get the x by itself we need to multiply everything by 4. Multiply this by 4 and the other number by 4. Now the 4's in the middle cancel out, that's very good. 8 times, or sorry, 4 times 84 is 336 and then 251 plus x and then 86 times 4 is 344. Okay, one step more. In order to get the x by itself we need to subtract 251 from all sides. Remember we need to be equal to all. Okay. That means we have an x coming down, and the numbers we get on either side are 85 and 93. So that means that your score on the fourth test must be between 85 and 93. Welcome to day two of 3.6. We're going to continue working with compound inequalities. Today we're specifically going to focus on OR inequalities. So let's take a look. We have a couple uh, blanks to fill in and then we will try example four. So it says a solution of a compound inequality involving OR is any number that makes either inequality true. And the way that we're going to solve an OR inequality is we're going to solve the two inequalities separately. Yesterday, when we were solving the and inequalities, we separated them and then we put them back together. And we also learned how you can just do it together the whole time. But today, they're always going to be separated. Or inequalities will not be combined. So let's take a look at example four below. We have 3t plus 2 is less than negative 7 or negative 4t plus 5 is less than 1. So let's focus on the left inequality. We're going to get the t by itself, so minus 2. 
So 3t is less than negative 9. Divide both sides by 3. t equals, actually sorry, not equals. Uh, t is less than negative 3. Bring down the or, and now we're going to do um, opposite operations for the next inequality. Minus 5. Negative 4t is less than negative 4. We're going to divide both sides by negative 4. And remember, when we multiply or divide by a negative, we have to flip the symbol. So that means we have t is greater than 1. So I'll just bring this down to the next line. Okay, there's our answer. Now we just need to graph it on the number line below. So let's go to the negative 3, open circle. Looks like they're both open circles on the 1 as well. And remember the trick I showed you a couple lessons ago? This symbol, the less than, points towards the left. And then the greater than symbol points towards the right. Now we're going to learn what an interval is. It is a portion of the number line. x is less than or equal to negative 3. This is an interval because the only numbers that are included are numbers that are equal to negative 3 or less than, aka smaller. So that's an interval. Now we're going to learn how to use interval notation. It describes an interval on the number line. It's just like a format. And for using interval notation, we're going to learn how to use parentheses, brackets, and infinity. So first, parentheses. We have used parentheses before, they are right here, so you want to write down the, what the symbols look like next to the word symbol on your note sheet. And the intervals and points are not included when you use parentheses. That is important. Remember, parentheses, end points not included. Now, if you want to include the end points, then you're going to use brackets. And brackets are kind of like parentheses, except they're kind of like boxy. Um, and take a look at the difference between parentheses and brackets. Parentheses happen when the intervals are the intervals endpoints are not included. Brackets happen when the interval endpoints are included. And you use parentheses when you have these symbols and you use brackets when you have these symbols. So when you have a line underneath, you're including the endpoint and you use brackets. When you do not have the line underneath the less than or the greater than, then you use parentheses. And then also infinity there's a positive infinity and there's a negative infinity. And you use the positive infinity when the interval continues forever in the positive direction, aka 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, going on forever. And you use the negative infinity when it goes forever in the negative direction. So an example of this would be, let's see if I can underline it, um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, dot, 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 going on forever. That would be negative infinity. So here's a little summary box for you. Um, use brackets for closed dots. So just draw a closed dot next to this. And you use brackets when you're including the endpoints so the symbols have the line underneath. And you use parentheses for open dots, so there's an open dot. And you use parentheses when there is no line underneath the inequality symbol. And then below is just a summary of an inequality, a graph, and interval notation. So let's flip to the back and let's do our last example. What is the graph of bracket negative 4 comma 6 parentheses? Okay, so bracket means we're including. So we're going to have a closed circle there. And parentheses means open, we're not including. So endpoint included endpoint not included. So go to the negative 4, actually you have to write these in, um, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and 6, open circle on the 6, close circle on the negative 4, and shade in between. If you don't see the word or, if it's just one interval combined, it's going to be the overlap. Remember, we learned this yesterday. It's the and inequality. So that is the graph. And now it's asking us, how do you write that interval as an inequality? 
well, the X is in the middle. When you have a closed dot, it's going to be the line underneath, and when you have an open dot, it's going to not have a line. So we have these symbols, and then the numbers are, are the endpoints, and that's it. This is the interval. Negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6. Now let's go to part b. What is the graph of x is less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than 2? Okay, so let's look at this symbol right here. That has a line underneath, so that means we're going to have a closed circle on the negative 1. And then we're going to have an open circle on the positive 2, because there's no line underneath that greater than symbol. Open. Sorry about the circles, they're really struggling at the bottom of the page. And now the symbols are pointing towards where you're, you're drawing the arrow. And my computer is not letting me draw a nice line, so there you go. There's the graph. And then how do you write it in interval notation? Well, this line underneath they means we're going to have a closed, and that means included, endpoint included. And then the greater than symbol is the open circle that we drew already, and the endpoint is not included. And for included, we're going to use a bracket. And for not included, we're going to use parentheses. And taking a look at the graph below, they're continuing towards positive and negative infinity. So this is how we're going to write it. And by the way, whenever you use positive or negative infinity, it's not contained to one point. So we're going to use parentheses. That's the idea to remember. Whenever you use infinity, use parentheses. And then it stops at the negative 1, so bracket, including, and then you write the word or, and it starts at the 2, parentheses, because it's not including, and then it goes towards positive infinity, and parentheses. So that is how you write that interval in interval notation.